Welcome to our video on chemical equilibrium. We'll be looking at chemical equilibrium and the equilibrium constant Kc. Chemical equilibrium plays an important role in the chemical industry. The harbour process and the contact process are two of many processes that make use of chemical equilibrium. Let's focus on the harbour process. Let's recap what we've learnt from the video. Nitrogen from the fractional distillation of air and hydrogen from natural gas is reacted in a closed container to form ammonia. To produce a maximum yield at minimum cost, pressure, temperature and catalysts are used. The flowchart shows the overall picture of the ideal conditions used to produce ammonia. Note that with each pass of the gases through the reactor, only about 15% of the nitrogen and hydrogen converts to ammonia. The percentage can vary from plant to plant, and by continual recycling of the unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen, the overall conversion is about 98%. Let's look at each in turn. Firstly, let's look at the catalyst used. The catalyst used is an iron catalyst, which has potassium hydroxide added to it as a promoter. A promoter is a substance which increases the efficiency of the catalyst. A reminder that a catalyst speeds up a reaction without participating in the reaction. The catalyst has no effect on the chemical equilibrium. All that the iron catalyst does is speed up the reaction, ensuring that a dynamic equilibrium is reached in a shorter period in the reactor. The pressure used in the harbour process can vary from one manufacturing plant to another, but it's always high. The most common pressure used is around 200 atmospheres. That's 200 times the atmospheric pressure at sea level. Looking at the chemical reaction for the harbour process, N2 gas plus 3H2 gas reversibly goes to form 2 NH3 gas. There are four molecules of gas on the reactant side of the equation, but only two on the product side of the reaction. Applying Le Chatelier's principle, if you increase the pressure, the equilibrium will shift to the side favouring the reaction, which produces fewer molecules. This will result in the pressure decreasing again, relieving the stress. Every industry wants to get as much ammonia as possible in the equilibrium mixture, that is, the highest yield possible. Thus, you need as high a pressure as possible. Increasing the pressure brings the molecules closer together. By kinetic theory, it will increase the chance of molecules hitting and sticking to the surface of the catalyst where they can react. The higher the pressure, the better in terms of the rate of a gas reaction. The disadvantage of very high pressure is the expense involved in reaching and maintaining the high pressure, as well as the need to build extremely strong pipes and containment vessels to withstand the very high pressure. This means that the running costs of the plant producing ammonia are very high. So, 200 atmospheres is a pressure chosen on economic grounds. Basically, if the pressure used is too high, the cost of generating it exceeds the price you can get for the extra ammonia produced. As in any industry, it's a numbers game. When we look at the most ideal temperature for the harbour process again, we must look at the cost involved. You need to shift the position of the equilibrium to the right to produce the maximum possible amount of ammonia in the equilibrium mixture. 
Note that the forward reaction is exothermic. N2 gas plus 3 H2 gas reversibly goes to form 2 NH3 gas. Applying Le Chatelier's principle, the forward reaction will be favoured if you lower the temperature. The system will respond by moving the position of equilibrium to counteract this stress and produces more heat. The temperature favoured is between 400 and 450 degrees Celsius. That is not a low temperature in relative terms. Looking at the reaction rate, the lower the temperature you use, the slower the reaction becomes. Again, we need to keep in mind that we want maximum yield. Thus, you need the gases to reach equilibrium within the very short time that they will be in contact with the catalyst in the reactor. 400 to 450 degrees Celsius is used as a temperature producing a reasonably high proportion of ammonia in the equilibrium mixture, but in a very short time. In summary, a catalyst of pure iron, a pressure of around 200 atmospheres and a temperature between 400 and 450 degrees Celsius is going to give the greatest yield for the most economical cost. The other industrial process that is of vital importance is the contact process, which is used to produce sulfuric acid. Using these processes, we will be looking at the factors that affect chemical equilibrium and how they are reflected on a graph. If we look at a rate versus time graph for the Haber process, we can interpret the various changes that have affected the chemical equilibrium. Given the equation where nitrogen and hydrogen makes NH3, note that you will need to learn the equation and the fact that to make ammonia, the forward reaction is exothermic. So at 5 minutes, the system has reached dynamic equilibrium. We can see this by the forward and reversing action occurring at the same rate. That is, the line is parallel to the time axis. At 10 minutes, both the forward and reverse reaction rates have increased by the same amount. This shape on the graph is an indication that a catalyst has been added. So we now investigate the graph further and note that there is a change at 15 minutes. Now remember that pressure, temperature and concentration affect equilibrium. We need to investigate which one of these changes is the most plausible. The dotted line represents the reverse reaction and has decreased sharply and the rate of forward reaction has also decreased. For the rate of both to be affected, we turn to the theory of influence of temperature on rates. A decrease in temperature will decrease the rate of the rate. For the reverse reaction to be influenced so sharply, the reverse reaction must be endothermic, and for the Haber process, that is correct. So we can conclude that the temperature was decreased at 15 minutes, causing the equilibrium to shift to the left, favoring the reverse reaction, which is endothermic. Let's look at one more graph for interpretation. The graph of concentration versus time for the Haber process is given. Notice that we are now looking at concentration and not the rate of the forward and reverse reactions. Between 0 and T1, the system is in equilibrium. At T1, N2 spikes, indicating an increase in concentration of N2. At T2, 
T2, the pressure increases as shown by the spikes. And at T3, the temperature increases shown by the gradual change to the curvature.